Hello and welcome to this week's Productivity Enhancer. Today we're going to take a look into our toolbox on SolidWorks and have a look at grooves. If you don't already have your toolbox available, under Tools we can go down to Add-ins and our SolidWorks toolbox is right here. Make sure you have a check mark in the box. Click OK. So now let's go into our toolbox and grab our Grooves tool here. And the first thing that you notice is we have two tabs. We have O-ring grooves, which are obviously grooves that are going to accept O-rings. And then we have retaining ring grooves, so we can have retaining rings. And under each one of these, you're going to find a different set of standard sized O-rings or retaining rings that you can just plop right into your model. We also have a handy dandy picture here that just offers a nice visual reference. As you can see, we're in external circlip, and we just have the first one chosen. And in the picture, you can see we have the groove here with this black and this black representing the space where the circlip is going to be. So let's go down and choose Ansymmetric. And we want an internal, just a basic internal ring. So let's go ahead and select that. And we'll select the internal face of this extrude right here. By clicking on it, you can see that it grabs the retaining ring that matches the inside diameter best. So SolidWorks does the hard work of finding out which retaining ring is going to work for you, given that there's a huge list to choose from. So by selecting that inside ring, this is the one that came up. It's the groove for ANSI B27.7. 3BM1-30 and that's the basic internal retaining ring. You can see selected diameter is 30 which will make the groove diameter a little bigger because the groove is going to be inside the cut on this external extrude. The groove width is going to be 1.4, radius is going to be 0.2 and this is all in ANSI metric. Also the list of sizes can be a good reference for when you're creating your part. Say you're not quite sure what diameter to make your internal cut here. You can always go and check out what size retaining rings are available and then dimension your part based on that size. However, it's probably a good idea to have most of this stuff figured out before you even start your part. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and create this retaining ring. And SolidWorks goes ahead and puts a groove right inside the internal surface of this ring right here. If we know we have others to add, we can just keep adding them right from this Grooves tool palette right here. But uh, we're going to click Done for now and take a look at the groove we just created. So let's take a look at the side view. And one thing that you should know about the Grooves tool is that it doesn't place the groove exactly where you might want it. It just kind of places it close to where you clicked and then you're responsible for placing it exactly where you want later on. To do that, we just go ahead and edit the sketch of that groove and you can see that we have the sketch profile of the groove right here and it's probably a good idea to add some relations so we're just going to make sure that this and this line are parallel and if we zoom in you can see that we do have a radius of 0.2 millimeters defining these two fillets here and let's zoom out and add another relation to this top line and this one here make those parallel as well and finally, we can place the inner edge of that groove and reference it with this back line here. And we know that we want that to be 16 millimeters from that line. So once that groove is placed where you want it, we can fully define the sketch. And let's just go ahead and select all of those. And there we go. The rest of the sketch is fully defined. Once we exit that sketch, you can see that that groove is placed where we want it and it's ready to roll. So let's make another couple of these grooves. And this time, let's select an O-ring. And for O-rings, you can see that we don't have ANSI metric. We only have ANSI inch. So let's just stick with that. And choose this face right here. Now we're going to want a face static groove. And let's choose it for liquid. So once again, let's click on the face. And it will grab the one that fits best. Once again, we can see all of our property information. And let's go ahead and create it. And we'll click Done and take a look. So let's grab the bottom view and edit that sketch. And let's, there we go, that's where our sketch is hiding. And as you can see that this groove actually has a little bit of draft on the walls. However, we can still add relations to make sure that this groove is going to be aligned with the rest of the part. Make that a parallel relationship. So let's make this groove a little narrower, but first we need to modify the angles and make sure that those are fully defined. Let's make this groove a little shorter by making the bottom three millimeters. And then we will dimension the outside to be 12 millimeters away. And we accept those dimensions. 
So let's fully define this sketch and select all of these entities. And SolidWorks will fully define that sketch for us. Let's go ahead and exit that sketch and take a look. So you can see that we have that groove. You can even see a little bit of the draft on the walls of that groove. And it goes all the way around our part. So let's see what happens when we choose a groove that doesn't belong. So if we take a look, we have a retaining ring selected with ANSI inch. We'll just keep that there. Heavy duty internal spiral ring. And you can see from the picture, this is our material and the ring should be on the inside. So let's see what happens when we choose an outside ring. So automatically it does choose one that has a, a diameter that's going to work, but let's go ahead and just choose one that won't and see what happens. Luckily, SolidWorks gives you this little message, invalid groove diameter, the groove is inside the part. We click OK and we know that that's not going to work. So let's click on it again and see if we can create the one that it chooses for us. So as you can see, we do have a groove that happens on the outside of this part. Let's take a look at the sketch. So what it's done is it's created a ridge instead of a groove because SolidWorks doesn't know if this part's going to be an internal part or an external part. So by putting an internal groove on an external surface, SolidWorks tries its best to approximate what it thinks you want. And if we take a look at the sketch profile, you can see that it does in fact go above the part as well as down into it as well, creating that groove that you do see when we exit the sketch. So why did we do this? Just to see that you can get yourself in trouble just by selecting the wrong type of groove. So even though we do have a massive groove in this part, chances are it's not going to be what we need for our purposes. So let's go ahead and delete that. And we're good to go. So that's the basics of the groove tool, which can be found right here in your toolbox. SolidWorks has all kinds of different standards and different types of sizes that you can add. But by having such a vast selection, it's easy to get yourself in trouble and choose the wrong groove. Luckily, it's easy to fix grooves and place them exactly where you want based on relations and dimensions. And it cuts out a lot of trial and error if you were just to sketch this profile yourself and make a revolved cut. So thanks for watching this week's Productivity Enhancer. Until next time.